Game modding has been around since the beginning of time, offering everything from Thomas the Tank Engine to improved graphics in computer games. But I guess you're here to install GameCraft mods, eh? Or maybe you're just here to watch me awkwardly talk to myself. Either way, the good news is, it's an easy process. I will roughly follow the Installing Mods text guide available on xmods.org. The direct link will be below this video if you prefer that. The links to the files you'll need to download in this video will also be down there. First things first, we need to patch GameCraft. This injects some code which will load any installed mods when GameCraft starts up, so Windows may protest a bit about this. To get started, download the latest release zip file for GCIPA. If you're not sure where your GameCraft folder is, you can find it through Steam. Right-click on GameCraft in your library, select Properties, then navigate to the Local Files tab and click on Browse Local Files. Once GCIPA has finished downloading, move the zip file into GameCraft's folder and extract its contents. If you extract GCIPA to its own folder, you'll have to move its contents into GameCraft's folder. When the extraction has completed, you should see a couple of new things. Most importantly, a new file called IPA should be there. Drag GameCraft onto IPA to complete the patching process. You should see a command prompt window open for a moment and then close again. This is perfectly normal. A new folder called Plugins should also appear. If you like the terminal or using Proton or Wine to run GameCraft, you can alternately patch the game with the command on screen. There we go, GameCraft is now patched. Please note that you'll have to patch GameCraft by dragging GameCraft onto IPA every time there's a GameCraft update. With that out of the way, let's install some mods to make sure it's all working properly. For convenience, let's install the GameCraft modding API first. It's not actually a functional mod, but it's used by most mods and is installed exactly like any other mod. First, download the latest GameCraft modding API release. When the download is done, move that file to GameCraft's plugins folder and extract it. You should see two new files called GameCraft modding API and Zero Harmony. I'd recommend deleting the zip file now. GameCraft modding API is now installed. Yeah, it's as simple as extracting some files into the correct folder. Okay, next, let's install a real mod. I'm going to install extra commands. Again, the first step is to download the latest release. Move the downloaded zip file to GameCraft's plugins folder. Extract the zip file and you're done. You can now delete the zip file. Now, if we launch GameCraft, we should see that our new mod has been installed. Extra commands only changes the command line, so I'll have to go into a game to confirm it works. I can see extra commands new commands in help, so everything is obviously working. If the mod you just installed isn't working, you can use the player.log file in GameCraft's app data to troubleshoot the issue. The text file contains a lot of useful info about GameCraft and mods. For example, you can see what mods are detected here. Below that, you can see what is happening from startup until shutdown of GameCraft. In general, if you don't see the plugin's loaded message, GameCraft needs to be patched by GCIPA again. If you don't see your mod loaded, redo the installation instructions. And that's all I need to do to mod GameCraft. I'd like to add that not all mods are installed this way, so always read the instructions from the mod. For instance, GameCraft scripting has to be moved and extracted directly into GameCraft's folder, not the plugins folder. Installing mods doesn't have to be the end of your modding journey. If you can't find a mod for what you want, you can make your own. The information and tools are all available for anyone to use. To get started with developing your own mod, check out my video or the text guide about building mods for GameCraft. 